Hi, my name is Nikki Ashton. I'm the Member of Parliament for Churchill and the uh, Aboriginal Affairs Critic for the NDP. I want to acknowledge that I'm uh, speaking to you from unceded Algonquin territory here on Parliament Hill in Ottawa. And I want to acknowledge that I'm reaching out to you on Treaty 7 territory. Uh, I wish I could be there in person, but I'm thrilled to, uh, to connect with you at least uh, uh, virtually. And I want to thank uh, uh, Lauren and Abby for inviting me to join you today. Of course, it was Jen Prosser who made this connection and keeps uh, Lethbridge and Alberta very much alive uh, uh, here in, uh, on Parliament Hill. Tina Fontaine, Sunshine Wood, Rennell Harper, Helen Betty Osborne, Lorna Blacksmith. These are all names of women that come from the part of the country that I come from. Women that come from the First Nations that I have the honor of representing. Some have gone missing. Some were murdered. And in the case of Rennell Harper, some survived to tell their story. And it's their stories and the stories that have been shared to me with me by their families that give me the drive and more importantly the guidance in the fight that I wage alongside you and many women, Indigenous and non-Indigenous women across the country for missing and murdered Indigenous women. I visited the communities more than once. I visited homes. I've heard firsthand the pain, the trauma, the crisis in which families of missing and murdered Indigenous women live. And I've also seen firsthand, and for me being from the North, I've seen firsthand the way a legacy of colonialism, the way systemic racism, the way misogyny is pervasive throughout our country. I've seen the way families have struggled to try and find answers on their own. And just a few short months ago, I joined Bernadette Smith and families from across Winnipeg in taking action into their own hands as they dragged the Red River to find the remains of their loved ones. I've been part of fundraisers where artists have come together with community members to scrape together whatever money there may be to be able to support families of missing and murdered Indigenous women and to support the struggle for justice. I, like you, have been to many vigils and rallies in support of the call for justice. And as an ally, it's been my honor uh, to be able to stand in the House of Commons on many occasions, calling for action, calling the government to, an, to account, calling for a national inquiry into missing and murdered Indigenous women. We know the numbers when it comes to missing and murdered Indigenous women. We know the numbers when it comes to understanding the reality that Indigenous women face. 36% of First Nations, Métis, and Inuit women live in poverty. When we look at First Nations youth, 25% of them live in poverty. And in some parts of the country, like in Manitoba, that number jumps to 62%. We know the disparities in terms of education, that a young person on reserve might receive up to two-thirds less funding going to school than a young person going to school off reserve. We see the disparities in health, in education, in road infrastructure, in opportunities. When we look at services available to women, out of the over 663 First Nations, only just over 40 of them have a women's shelter on reserve. And we know that important organizations that advocated but also provided important services to Indigenous women and to Indigenous communities are no longer to do, here to do that work. Organizations like the Aboriginal Healing Foundation, Families of Sisters in Spirit, like the National Aboriginal Health Organization, were all cut to the tune of about $100 million. And those cuts haven't just happened at the national level or at the regional level, but they've also happened at the local level. And you know better than anyone how those kinds of cuts affected, have affected women's space. And the fact that because of those cuts, it's Indigenous women that have been disproportionately affected. We've also seen the way 
that the federal government is complicit in the violence that Indigenous women face. I've had the honor of rising in the House of Commons to speak out on behalf of my constituency, but to speak in solidarity with Indigenous women uh, and families of missing and murdered Indigenous women across this country. And every time, I'm not just disappointed, I'm horrified by the kind of responses we hear from this government that are callous, uncaring, and, that, and as we know, complicit. What's clear to me is that the ground, the ground underneath our feet is changing. Thanks to the voices of Indigenous women, families of missing and murdered Indigenous women, and Indigenous communities, more and more Canadians are taking note. I've seen it in our own province. When a vigil took place this, uh, this past fall for Tina Fontaine, whose remains were found wrapped in plastic in the Red River in Winnipeg, a vigil brought together hundreds of people and about half of them were actually non-Indigenous. And what people are saying is that there needs to be action. What people are doing is that they're supporting the call for a national inquiry and the national call for action. We're hearing it from international organizations like Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, and the United Nations, who are all calling Canada out for its inaction and even culpability when it comes to violence against Indigenous women. We know that premiers have called for an inquiry. We know that national Aboriginal organizations have been at the forefront of calling for an inquiry. And we know that through Idle No More and the, vi the, the vibrant activism we're seeing, the frontline activism we're seeing, that one of the key messages is the need for action, the need for justice for missing and murdered Indigenous women. While these voices are growing, Indigenous, non-Indigenous, Canadian and international, it seems that one player that's not at the table and not willing to listen is the federal government. So we need to keep up the fight. We will keep up the fight. The work that you are doing to engage your community, to engage people across your province and across the country is critical. Your voices, the voices of Indigenous women, the, vo the voices of families of Indigenous communities are powerful and are inspiring many to get involved. We must keep up the calls for decolonization, against racism, getting rid of misogyny, the calls to end the violence against Indigenous women, Indigenous communities, and we must make sure that we continue to work across this country, that we work in solidarity, that there's room for alliances, that there's room to keep up the fight at the national level. There is hope. There is hope that together we can and we will not stop until no Indigenous woman and no woman will go missing or murdered 